Well, it's time to rebuild the old Craftsman 21 horse mower. It's dad's old mower. It uh, blows oil when running uphill or if you fill it all the way like it's supposed to be. So uh, we checked out the valve and the uh, breather. They're all in good shape. So we suspicion the uh, rings are probably bad on it. So I'll pull the hood off, pull the deck off, and then start pulling the motor. And of course, as you take these things apart, you want to take uh, some sandwich bags, mark them, and put your parts in them so you don't lose them, or wonder where they came from. Not that that ever happens. <laughs> okay, so the hood is off, the deck is off, so now I will drain the oil, disconnect the battery, which is under the seat there, and uh, probably take the fuel line off. Once I get the battery disconnected, I'll uh, take the electrical connections off on this side here right down in there and we'll look to pull in the motor after that okay I've disconnected the battery as you see I only disconnected the ground terminal uh, it's the only one you need to disconnect come around there's the one plug for uh, disconnecting the uh, motor wiring and the starter wire has been disconnected. While I was at it, I disconnected the uh, exhaust manifold. I don't think it would have been a problem, but just make things a little bit easier. And of course, on the other side here, you have the uh, fuel lines been disconnected from here. You had a uh, fuel tank breather line connected here. And I disconnected the throttle cable. So next thing to do is to jack this thing up and uh, start pulling the motor bolts. So now to pull the motor, need to pull this here pulley off, which this drives the deck belts, that drives the transmission up there, and uh, that's a, I believe it's a 16 millimeter bolt there. Just need to pull that out, and then pull the uh, four engine mount bolts, which are up in here. There are four of them that hold the engine on. And then we'll be able to pull the motor out. And with that, the engine is out. I uh, brought it into the uh, shed and I'll rebuild it inside the shed. Here's the motor in the shed. I'll start tearing it down and uh, get the thing started to be rebuilt. Now, while taking this here main cover off, the bolts that hold it on, the ones in back, are longer than the ones that were in front. You need to notice these kind of things so you get them back in the right places. And the oil filler tube <coughs> is also held on by one of the back bolts. So now to take this here flywheel off, Need to pry this here cover open. There. Get a socket that fits it. Pull that there bolt. And then uh, the rest of this here stuff will come off. And then there, then you'll need to pull the, uh, this here is plastic. So this will all come off and then the flywheel will come off with a uh, flywheel puller.
So now to pull that flywheel, I have my uh, harmonic balance puller, two bolts bolted into it, tighten this down and just tap it on the top and that should break that uh, wedge fitting loose that is right in here and the flywheel should come right off. Oh yeah, and you don't want to forget to put this here bolt back in. It's not tightened all the way down. There's a little bit of a gap there so that the harmonic balance puller will have something to press onto without ruining the, the shaft of the motor. So uh, put that back in and then you center the harmonic balance puller on top of that bolt. Like I say, you leave a little bit of a gap there so that wheel will have something to pop up off of. Now then, as you look here, you'll see magnets around this here flywheel. They go along these here coils here, which is your charging system for the battery on your lawnmower. So uh, you want to be kind of careful with that. <laughs> so now to pull the dipstick here, I'm going to pull these wires off of this here clip. And dipstick just pulls straight up and out. Now, <coughs> These wires here, see these wires go up to the charging system. These here wires, they go down around to the coil for uh, shutting the engine off. It has a plug right here that you can disconnect. Just a second. Okay, you disconnect these here wires. Now the charging system is separate from the rest of the wiring on the motor that goes to the coil. Now the next thing to take off will be this here starter. These here bolts are half inch bolts. I've already loosened them up. And this here one, as you can see, has a hold down for these wires going up to that uh, charging coil. So you need to uh, uh, take note of that so that when you put it back together you can get it back in the right place. Now then to get the reed valve cover off, you got this here cover which directs air so you got this here bolt here and then the two reed cover bolts and that's what's coming off next now then taking this here reed cover off the uh, gasket kit that I bought comes with the gasket for it however it says that if it didn't come with the gasket to use this here silicone type stuff so it looks like this one uses silicone on it there's the reed valve there for your crankcase and it's in good condition. And at the end of this hose, which goes into the side of the carburetor right here just before the inlet of the carburetor, there is this here to uh, reduce the amount that it sucks on this here reed. So uh, that should uh, uh, be noted and uh, put back in and, and uh, don't lose it. <laughs> and once again I try to keep these components together. Uh, the bolts for them. The uh, orifice is in there. It's right there. Orifice is in there. The, the reed cover. And that, that will come out and get cleaned up. But I try to keep these all together so that they don't get misplaced and uh, keep them bagged up separately so that uh, I know what goes where when I go to put it back together. This is actually a new plug. It might have oh half hour, 45 minutes on it. But this thing was burning so much oil it just carboned this here thing right up. The last piece of wiring on this, remember we unplugged this off of the uh, charge coil comes around to the carburetor and then grounds out on the block so this is the kill wire for it and uh, that will need to come off and this here uh, uh, cover will also need to come off. And this here cover is pretty light so you want to be kind of delicate with it 
so it doesn't get too badly dented up. So now one wire goes up through the block here to the coil pack. As you can see, I've already unplugged it from the coil. And the other goes around, like I say, to the carburetor and then to the block. Once again, taking the valve cover off, see there is no gasket in it. It has this here silicone on it. So, that's the instructions on the uh, gasket set comes, although it comes with a gasket for it. If it didn't have one, put the silicone back on. And when we take the heads off, we'll make sure that we get the push rods uh, set so that I'll be putting them in a box so they go back in the same place. And uh, I don't think I'll be taking these off. I think I'll just take that head off because I'm not really not doing anything with the valves at all. Well, moment of truth. The head is off. As you can see, it looks just terrible. But what I noticed here on the head gasket looks like it may be blown and that's where the oil was getting into is what it looks like to me. Anyway, I'll continue to take it down and <coughs> clean it up. Well, the case is now apart. You can see in place of the second cylinder, they have a weight that takes the place of uh, the second cylinder, so it'll balance it out. This here, there's a notch here that goes into the oil pump right here. You see the oil pump there, you got the fill, the inlet for the oil pump. Comes off the filter, lubricates this here shaft, and goes throughout the motor from there. Interesting. And then of course, there is the oil pump. Now that I have the piston out and the crank, it's time to go clean it all up and change rings, hone the cylinder a little bit, and put her back together. So here I have everything pretty much cleaned up on this. This cylinder, you can tell I'm replacing the rings. I'm going to hone this here cylinder. As you can see, it's kind of glazed. You can see this here ring right along here. How well you can see that. There is no ridge there, really. I don't need to do a ridge reamer. It doesn't catch engine really didn't have that many years on it but it smoked it uh, blew oil since the day that dad bought it that was because it was uh, this here head gasket here had blown and uh, so I'm gonna hone this here cylinder get get the glaze off of it give the ring something to seat on and uh, while I'm at it I will check to see if this here is warped and what I'll do is I'll take my straight edge here and put it on different places, different areas and see if there's any uh, gap right along this here area. So we'll get back to that in just a few minutes. Like I say you take this here straight edge and you put it tight there and then you look for any gap 
underneath there and uh, I've run this in several, several directions I've run it on the head as well same same uh, same way and uh, I did not see where any of its warped so I'm going to presume that <coughs> excuse me I'm going to presume that because these bolts are so far apart and these are so far apart these are nice and close but this is just kind of a weakness here this here hole here is a line up pin as well as this here hole here you put a line up pin in there so right across here has to hold all of this tight and I'm presuming I hope <laughs> that that is why this failed from the beginning and hopefully we'll get it where it won't fail this time so now what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna start honing the cylinder I'm just putting some uh, 30 weight oil in there to uh, lube the stones got my hone here it's an old hone but it's always done real well for me I'll lube the stones up here too. You want to keep this lubed, that will help it not ruin anything. It will help it to uh, slide and hone that off without making a big, well it will make a big mess, but it won't be a mess inside the cylinder when you're done. So anyway, I'm going to start honing this and go from there. You want to run this hone back and forth. You don't want to run it in one place. You want to keep it going. That's like to say to uh, score that cylinder up so when you put the new rings in there, they'll have something to seat to. And they shouldn't blow oil when you're done. Put a little bit more lube in there. See, I'm going all the way down to the bottom. Hopefully where those stones won't tip out, going all the way to the top. Got to go a little bit slower there so you can kind of see. And we'll wipe that out little bit see what it looks like see it's taking that glaze off needs a little bit more honing you get a nice cross hatch you got some going that way you got some going this way and that's what you want you want a cross hatch so that those rings will will uh, seat on that uh, cylinder there anyway I'm going to continue on and uh, get back to you when I'm done. Well I have this here honed now. As you can see the glaze is pretty much gone. Get that strap out of the way. The glaze is gone. You got the cross hatch on there that the uh, rings will seat on. And so I will go ahead and clean this here back up and then we'll go ahead and uh, start putting the thing back together well now as you can see I removed the seals out of here this here's the seal that goes in it put that in I'm going to line that up just slightly tap it in Make sure you get it going in evenly. And the 
there it is. Of course when rebuilding a motor you don't want to start it up dry. These here areas I put just a little bit of this white grease. It's a lithium based grease and uh, like I say it's a very light coating just so that when you first start the engine up it's not going to be dry and uh, cause possibility of uh, damage to the engine. I'll put that on all the journals, all the all the bearing surfaces. I will squirt a little bit of oil in uh, certain areas like here where the cam goes, uh, where the tappets go for the lifters. I'll put all I'll put lubrication in all those spots so that when you start the engine up it won't do any damage. So the crank is the first piece in. This here weight is on the crank. Part of it. And this here is the timing gear that you time with the cam. And there's a keyway here. You line that keyway with the slot up and it just slides right on there. And uh, next I will uh, prepare the piston. I'll put the rings in it, get the ring compressor, get it pressed in there, and then uh, of course I'll uh, attach this to the crank, the connecting rod, and then I will uh, torque those down to their specifications so that's all ready, and then we'll go on to the cam and other components. Of course it's time to put the rings on. You put the oil control ring and these two rings on first, then the second ring has two paint marks on it and the paint marks are to be right, sorry about that, right on the right hand side of the gap, top ring has one paint mark, same thing, paint mark on the right hand side of the gap and uh, you don't want these gaps to line up you want them so that they e even on the oil uh, ring here it's got little it's got gaps there you don't want any of these uh, gaps to line up or uh, you'll lose compression or you'll blow oil so make sure when you do that that they're all spaced out equally around the uh, piston so now I have the piston rings on. You can see the two paint marks to the right side of the gap. Top ring paint mark to the right side of the gap. Gaps are not lined up. They're here, 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 and here. So none of the rings on this are lined up that center expansion ring the gap is in the center here so so these are all not that I think that center one makes a difference but the two scraper or wiper rings the gaps are not lined up your two main rings the gaps are not lined up now when you put the piston in crank is down, the piston will go in with this facing right or the AVS pointing out. The other side has a number so this AVS and the Briggs and Stratton logo should be pointing out. Now I have a ring compressor on there. It compresses the ring so you can uh, get all of that slid into the cylinder. I took the connecting rod cap off. Like I say, th this will be pointing to the right uh, where the bolt, where the cap goes. AVS is pointing out. That will set down in there. Okay, I have the ring compressor on. And it's compressed those rings so that you can slide the piston down in. 
what I did is go around the ring compressor here make sure that it is seated down on the top of the head so that you can push that piston down down here if you can see that you got to make sure that, that rod is not pushing up against the crank and uh, the crank is all the way down so that that really shouldn't be in the way but you lightly tap these in and uh, I'll reset this and see if I can't record that okay we'll go ahead and put that piston down in like I say you want to lightly tap that in making sure this here is staying tight against the top of the cylinder it doesn't take a lot of effort to get that pushed down in there the pistons in all the rings are in and that should be good now look up in there the connecting rod still away from the crankshaft you could can rotate that up And get that set in place and that's what we're going to be doing next okay so those connecting rod bolts right in here they're torqued down to 150 inch pounds and you don't want to mistake that with foot pounds then of course each time you do something like this you want to grab the crank and make sure it still turns over and this is still turning over pretty good for only having one side of the crank hooked up but it's it seems to be turning just fine so the next components in will be the tappets that's these they're solid uh, and we're putting those back in the same place they were when we took them out just uh, it's it's easier on the engine that way it's already wore in and then the cam will go in and you can see right here there's a little dot and that will correspond to this dot on the cam gear and that times your engine that times your your valves to your uh, piston so now the cam is in two dots are lined up that dot is on the tip of that point this is between the two and so those two dots are in the exact same spot next will be to put the governor on and that slips over the cam there and onto the governor rod here and then the other half of the case has a position on it that will keep that in place which is right in here so uh, uh, this case will hold that governor where it should be uh, it also has a slot for this which is right here that will keep this here from rocking back and forth and uh, uh, that like I say that's just a counterweight because it's just a single single cylinder engine so We'll get that, we'll get the gasket put on, uh, put the other half of the case on and start torquing those bolts down. And they, they're torqued in a specific pattern and I'll show you that pattern on the paperwork that I have. So, I don't know if you can read this or not. But uh, t when you screw the uh, sump screws back on they, they go on a certain pattern this is a pattern I'm using and the number nine goes into an oil part so you need to put a bit of uh, sealant on that particular screw before you uh, put it in so uh, we'll get going on that as you can see I have the sump on the bolts are not in yet but uh, 
I'll be using red Loctite on that. And that's to uh, keep those from vibrating out during uh, the life of the engine. Anyway, we'll get to cracking on that. So now all the bolts are in. They're just snug. They're not torqued yet. Like say, there's a pattern here you torque them to. And it shows the pattern here for this particular engine. You don't want to torque them down to the final uh, specification at first. You want to do it in three increments. So I divide it up into three increments. And uh, so I will take my uh, torque wrench in inch pounds and start torquing her down. All right, those are all torqued down. You want to turn it over. Make sure it turns over freely. It's not catching on anything. And then you can move on to the next step, which I'll be putting the oil pump and its components together next. So now, like I say, I have these all torqued down now. I have cranked it over. Make sure that nothing's uh, banging we're not right next is this here oil pump got the oil pump ring this here shaft is slotted and on the end end of the cam this will fit into that slot on the end of the cam we have the outer ring for the pump and then the pump and the center of the pump has a slot that goes in the other end of this shaft so we'll start putting that together. So now I have the oil pump back in. Got the outer pump, the inner pump. The shaft is going through, it's locked into the uh, camshaft. And I have shaft. this here uh, lubricated with a light film of the uh, lithium lube. And that just, uh, it'll help that seal seal. And uh, it'll help keep the pump from uh, uh, getting ruined when you first start the engine up uh, with fresh oil. Okay now the oil pump is back together the engine has been rotated it all feels good time to go to the head and uh, so now I'm gonna put the head on and like I say I kept the intake and the exhaust push rod separated and put them back in the original spots down on top of the tappets. I don't know if you can see that. You're down on top of the tappets there. Got the head gasket in place. Uh, it came with two different head gaskets and so I matched this this particular one up to it. And then the uh, head goes on top there. Of course I'll have to uh, stop taping and and line those uh, push rods up and get that all put together and then we'll uh, uh, go to uh, putting the bolts in and torquing her down. Coming over to Roy's house, see what he's up to. See the lawnmower decks off. No motor. And he's videotaping. He's rebuilding the motor. Head goes on top there. Of course, I'll have to uh, stop taping and line those uh, push rods up. Get that all put together, and then we'll uh, uh, go to uh, putting the bolts in and torquing her down. Hey, Roy. Hey, Mike. You caught me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might videotape me videotaping you. Well, well I can do that. <laughs> Darn wind again. Let me get over here and see if I can change things up a bit. Putting the head bolts in now. I have that at top dead center so that these push rods shouldn't be pushing on it as I torque those down. 
Just do it the lazy way. So we got more like the other way. Let's go back over here and try to cover the mic beans. I didn't bring the mic muffler. Look how pretty and shiny that is. Yeah, I got some pretty high tech cleaner for that. Real happy with how it uh, actually worked on the parts washer. will just get snugged, not going to be torqued or tightened down in any fashion because you have to do that in a certain order and I'll look at the paperwork and find out what that order is and what the uh, torque specification is on it. So there's an order you tighten these down in. See it's one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight and you don't tighten that down all in one swoop swoop you go snug 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 and then slowly pop it in and cylinder head and that's going to be the 220 inch pounds you don't want to go foot pounds that's inch pounds it's only an aluminum block so uh, you don't, you're only going by inch pounds. I have that. It's the same for the uh, sump. So, and that broke up in the three. So, we can also show you. It's nice to be working underneath here because it's raining. Finally. Oh man, Connex didn't have a bunch of other ones stuff in there. He might be able to get that lawnmower in there instead of sitting in here where we wouldn't have room to work. So go 74, each line's about 25. I guess between here it's about 25. So 75 is going to be about three notches. Number one, get this lined up right. So this is number one. And there again, we're not trying to get the full set yet. We're just trying to get them close to being snugged up about the same, and then we'll go over them again. You don't want to grab your torque wrench anywhere on the wrench. You want it on this swivel because that's how it's measured from this point to this point. Mm -hmm. You want to go nice and smooth.
120 plus one mark. What year is this truck? 69. 69. Uh, the tiller's in the way. You notice the green color on this stuff. That's all the dirt from the neighbor, neighbor, right? Having all those people come over and ride their horse on that tilled ground without watering it. And it just hoses this place. Pastor need mode. <laughs> you need a cow. No, I don't. Be, be crazy like dad. <laughs> okay, it's time to put the reed valve on. See, one side has a metal plate on it that needs to be turned up. That will sit right here. And uh, so I'll get the bolt for that get that put on then uh, put the cover on we're using this here ultra black gasket maker because this originally just had silicone on it uh, so we're not going to use the gasket that came with the set so uh, we'll follow the directions on this and make a new gasket with it with it for that so I got the reed valve in there set nice and flat on that uh, hole for it. I have the gasket material on this and for the valve covers as well because same thing for it. And the directions say to uh, uh, put it on immediately and uh, finger tighten the uh, bolts until the silicone starts to squeeze out. And then I'll need to let it sit for an hour before I can uh, tighten it the rest of the way up. So that's what we'll be doing next. So now the breather cover is on. Uh, it's got to sit for an hour before I can uh, tighten it the rest of the way down. Same with the valve cover. It's back on. And uh, it needs to sit for an hour before I can tighten it all the way down. I did put this here one bracket back on. Probably put a few other incidentals on it here and there. I'll probably get the carburetor put back on, set up. I can do that kind of stuff uh, while this here uh, gasket material dries, and then I can uh, tighten those two things back up. Okay, so now I have the carburetor put on. I have the linkage all hooked back up, the choke linkage. It's all uh, working properly here. Put this here cover on as uh, it's not going to affect this here gasket material. Still need to wait a little while longer before I can tighten those two things. So I will continue to uh, put on the uh, charging system, the starter. Uh, I don't think I'll put the flywheel, well I can't put the flywheel on yet. Anyway, I'll get other uh, pieces put on and once I can tighten those uh, two things up, I can pretty much finish this motor up. Okay, I put this here 
cover piece on that directs the airflow around the engine and uh, put the wiring in put it up to where the coil pack will be but uh, I won't put that coil pack on till I uh, <coughs> excuse me get the uh, flywheel on starters on the wires are going through here so I got that clip back on keep the wires up from being uh, ruined wire up through here onto the carburetor onto the uh, grounding post for the engine kill and still waiting for uh, this stuff to dry before I can tighten these two things up so once that happens uh, put the uh, flywheel on put the coil pack on get it set put the cowling on and whatnot and of course the uh, <coughs> dipstick goes in on when the cowling goes on but get that, get all that put together and uh, we'll be ready to put it back on the mower okay so the flywheels in place you see these two big holes here these here two holes are threaded that's for pulling it off you got these two other big holes that these here knobs go into and this here's just a plastic fan get that on there and in those holes you set the cover on that and bolt her down so it's all pretty much put together now obviously I need to put the coil pack on that's next and uh, you have to set the air gap on that and uh, so I'll be doing that next so we got the cowling to put on too okay I got the coil pack set on here loose magnet for it is right here to do is you take a piece of paper fold it the four four times well two times four four thicknesses you set this in here uh, shoot I need both hands set that between the coil and the flywheel there and you turn it so the magnet pulls it up against it anyway you tighten it down after you get that done and that should set your air gap for that coil well there it is all put back together everything's on of course you got to put an oil filter on it and whatnot fill it with oil but I'll get that done once I have it on the mower and get it on and see how she runs okay the motors in I got the pulley on underneath there the drive belt is hooked up to it already uh, I need to uh, put the exhaust on wire it up uh, put a plug in it obviously put oil and a filter on it and hook up the fuel line and the uh, throttle cable and then uh, we'll be ready to give her a test so you know even when changing oil on a lawnmower they have a rubber inside the holes here and that's to keep the oil from flowing out of the filter so it stays full and uh, so when you change oil or, or anything you want to fill this up with oil and it'll the fil filter will soak that in and you just keep filling it up until you get it pretty much full and then you spin the filter on and then you fill the crankcase up with oil uh, just to let you know well I guess it's moment of truth time 
Got the oil filter on, fuel lines hooked up, the throttle cables hooked up. It's filled with oil. Wiring's hooked up. Starter's hooked up. Time to start it up and see if it works. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, rats, the battery's dead. Okay, I got it jump. Let's give her a try this time. What is that noise I hear? Didn't sound like Dad's lawnmower. Where is it? Oh my gosh. Let me get over here. Okay, it never smoked on the way down that hill. But use the fog for mosquitoes just coming up that little hill. So let's see what happens. No smoke. No smoke, you must have done something wrong. I must have. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good though. Didn't even need to choke it to start it up. It's fired right up. Huh. Well, put a deck on it and go ahead and try this out here. See if it works. Sure. <laughs> It costs a little over a hundred dollars just for parts to rebuild it and I think that all that was is a gasket and rings and maybe a bearing and the whole thing was just a blown head gasket well back to work